Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you all again. Thalassophobia is the name for the fear of deep bodies of water, such as the sea and the ocean. The most effective way to permanently cure this condition for everyone who is suffering from it is simply to clean the water from the seas and oceans worldwide. You might think I'm crazy, but let's see what happens if we remove 1,344,420,000 cubic kilometers of water from the seas and oceans globally to see whether humans can continue to exist or how the planet's appearance will change. First of all, we need to agree on how the water in the seas and oceans worldwide will be drained. Basically, there will be two possible scenarios. The first scenario is that the water is drawn from the deepest point under the ocean floor, the Mariana Trench, through a drain valve resembling a wormhole, connecting to a point somewhere in the universe, like the planet Sakaar in the movie Thor, Ragnarok. In the second scenario, the sea and ocean waters suddenly vanish like magic and disappear completely. For the first case, if the drain hole is small enough, with a diameter of a few meters to a few dozen meters, the, the decrease in sea level, according to calculations, would be so small that it would take from hundreds of thousands of years to hundreds of millions of years to drain the oceans. You won't see giant water whirlpools until half of the seawater is drained. The reason is that the drain hole is too small and the ocean is too deep. Furthermore, seawater cannot be completely drained if you release it this way. The reason is that the water level in the seas and oceans worldwide is uneven. Moreover, they are also separated by underwater mountain ranges. This means that after the water removal process comes to a complete halt, many sea areas worldwide will still have water. Returning to the main content, the slow draining of seawater implies that humans will have enough time to develop a long-term plan to survive in the scenario of gradually depleting seawater or perhaps not even needing to do anything. Because who knows, human civilization might disappear long before the seawater reaches a significantly concerning level. Case 2. If the sea were snapped away by Thanos, most visibly, tens of thousands of ships and people drifting on the sea would fall from a height of thousands of meters to the ocean floor and disintegrate. The beach teams would be luxury falling only from a few, made as high and sustaining menor injuries. Next team. It might make seafood enthusiasts feel excited. When all marine creatures simultaneously fall to the ocean floor, it creates a literal rain of fresh seafood. Researcher Philae Christensen at Richard Columbia, Fisheries University, has provided the first estimated figure for the total weight of fish in the world's oceans, approximately 2 billion tons, equivalent to 308 Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. It sounds like music to the ears, but consider the fact that most of the fish falling to the ocean floor from a height of a few thousand meters will be shattered and you can't drive to distant seas to catch fish. Almost the entire two billion tons of sea fish will die and decompose before humans can bring them back and slowly eat them from the fridge. As an inevitable consequence, the air at this time will be filled with the strong smell of dead fish. The good news is that we will have a super museum covering 362,000 kilons on Esert's mark, displaying everything that has ever drifted into the sea. All the garbage that humans have dumped into the sea, all the airplanes that have crashed into the sea, all the ships and submarines that have sunk, along with countless tree sewers in legends. Moreover, you will finally know whether mermaids exist and where the uh, uh, legendary Atlantis island is. Enough joking. The sea and the ocean play three crucial roles for life on Earth. Firstly, this is where ephemeral creatures called phytoplankton produce up to 70% of the oxygen. The disappearance of marine and oceanic atmospheres would mean a gradual reduction in the oxygen content in the atmosphere. So this decline in the future will not be sufficient to affect the breathing of creatures. 
The reason is, the remaining oxygen reservoir in the atmosphere, accumulated over billions of years, is still extremely large, up to 1.2 million billion tons. Second, the seas and oceans regulate the climate on a global scale, absorbing a large amount of sunlight and retaining it as heat. Subsequent ocean currents then push warm water towards the two poles, cooling it, and then bring the cold water back towards the equator, uh, creating a cyclical uh, pattern uh, that keeps the equator from getting too hot and the poles from getting too cold. Without the oceans, it's like living in the middle of summer without air conditioning. Uh, third, the seas and oceans are an integral part of the water cycle. For those who don't know, the water cycle starts with water evaporating from the oceans into the atmosphere, condensing, falling as precipitation into rivers and streams, and ultimately flowing back to the enclosed seas, completing the cycle. About 90% of the water vapor in the atmosphere comes from the oceans. Without oceans, Earth's atmosphere would be extremely dry, resembling those dry winter days that make your lips look like a parched field. Remember, everything would be even worse. The once green planet would now turn into a vast desert of half a billion square kilometers. Clouds and rain would almost disappear, and water-thirsty plants and colorful flowers would quickly wither. Over 40,000 Talus Kilonde Tus of forests worldwide would gradually become colossal graveyards. Ecosystem collapse occurs on a global scale, not stopping there. Extremely dry air causes the remaining surface water in ice sheets near the poles, in freshwater lakes, and enclosed seas, like the Dead Sea or the Black Sea, to evaporate rapidly. Worse still, without enough water, most of the world's population and terrestrial creatures will quickly die of thirst. Farming is now impossible due to the lack of irrigation water. Human survival now entirely depends on covered reservoirs remaining underground water sources and how humans use them. And you think that's bad enough? Remember the 40,000 kilnonat teat of forests, which are now reduced to ashes? Just a spark is enough to make them burn for weeks, even months on end. Putting out these fires is unthinkable in this age, to the extent that people might be hesitant to bring water for firefighting, even while going for a swim. Forest fires relentlessly heat up the earth. As they can't be extinguished, they will spread into cities and likely devour the last surviving individuals. Eventually, the earth becomes a barren, scorching planet, flooded with death. It seems like having oceans is scarier, doesn't it? Those who have just watched the video, what do you think will happen if Earth's oceans dry up? Compiled by Wisdom Nexus, let me know your thoughts after watching the video. Do you agree with the content of the video or not? If you find it useful, remember to leave a like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to not miss any videos from Wisdom Nexus. Now, goodbye and see you again.